Hello, and welcome to today's installment of Three Things About a World Quilt. I'm Maren Hansen, Curator of International Collections at the International Quilt Museum. Our museum is located at the, at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and like museums all over the United States, we are currently closed to the public. But I want to share some of our collection with you, pieces from all over the world. During this time of social distancing, self-quarantining, and area lockdowns, I think looking at and talking about art and folk art can help us feel closer. Stay tuned as each day this week, I bring you a quick introduction to a new world quilt. So today, three things about a world quilt is looking at this piece from China called a Baijia Bay. And you can see that it does have the uh, format of a quilt. It's got patchwork, it's got applique, it is a bed covering and it is covered in lots of different symbols which may or may not look familiar to you. It was made in 2013 and the reason we know exactly uh, when it was made is that we know the maker. Here is Pang Kai Li with her daughter-in-law showing us the quilt. Pang Kai Li lives in a village called Wang Jian, Wang Jian village, and it is right adjacent to the terracotta warrior site. So in Xi'an, China, in northwestern China, where the terracotta warriors were found uh, at the, the tomb of the first uh, Chinese emperor. So she lives in a little village very near that famous site. And I had the opportunity in 2013 to visit with her in her village with some other uh, colleagues and watch her as she worked, watch her making some of these quilts. She does make lots of them. As you can see there on the ground, there are many of these roundels that she's working on simultaneously. Here she is at work embroidering. She appliques and then embroiders over the top. And she does make these in quantity. She makes them to sell uh, in the tourist market. And being close to the Terracotta Warrior site is convenient for her. She's able to provide these to the to the hawkers or the sellers who um, sell things to tourists as they come and visit the archeological site. These, this is a pile of objects sitting in her home that she's in the middle of or that are completed. Sometimes she makes bags, sometimes she makes quilts, sometimes she makes jackets. And they are, as I said, patchwork, applique, embroidered. And this uh, tourist industry of making these kinds of patchwork objects um, that it's been around for a long time. Patchwork has been around for a long time in China in general and applique and embroidery especially, but selling these tourist objects um, has a more recent history. You can see on the right there that's President Reagan and his wife Nancy back in 1984. This was the first American state visit to China in uh, more than a decade since Richard Nixon first went to China in the early 70s. So Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan visited in 1984 and uh, at a tourist location, they encountered some of these objects which were already being sold um, to visitors. And on the left is a piece that I purchased myself in the early 1990s at the Great Wall of China. So these are sold uh, all over predominantly northern China, but all over tourist sites across the country. Um, so if you've been to China yourself, you have most likely come across some of these objects. The next thing I wanted to tell you about these uh, Bai Jia Bei is that they're talismanic. And that's exciting to me because just a couple days ago, I told you about Central Asian patchwork. And here I am freezing some images. Uh, of Central Asian patchwork. The, in Central Asia, patchwork is seen as talismanic, spiritually protective. They function as amulets um, and as protective charms, um, especially for children. And on the bottom right, you see a cradle cover. So children are especially, um, it's warranted to protect them with patchwork. And in China, uh, there's the same attitude or the same view. On the top left is a more aristocratic garment done in patchwork and lavishly embroidered with symbols, uh, auspicious or protective symbols. 
Uh, so that would have been for a wealthy child, probably a boy, um, but very uh, everyday versions of this still exist today. You can see some children on the right wearing patchwork vests. And so these kinds of garments were believed to sort of scare away evil spirits and to make sure that children were able to grow and remain healthy and make it out of childhood. And this is a, a patchwork quilt in our, a very small patchwork quilt in our collection from Gansu province in China, made in the early 1980s. Um, what makes them protective? Well, they have symbols on them. And uh, there's a common set of symbols in China called the wudu, which are the um, five poisons. And poison doesn't sound like a very good thing. It doesn't seem like you would want to wear anything poisonous on you, but they actually are protecting the wearer from external um, bad um, malignant spirits or um, anything evil in the environment. So uh, the lizard, the scorpion, the snake and the spider are some of the five poisons. There are actually more than five. You sometimes see a toad or a centipede, um, but they all represent um, the ability to ward off anything evil that might um, attack the wearer. There are, uh, the, the piece we are featuring today also has these large roundels that Pan Kai Li was working on. And uh, a tiger is featured in the center of four on the uh, on the outside with the character for um, king or prince Wang um, and that is to give special protection to boy children um, little princes uh, and you can see also there's a scorpion there and a lizard a spider so all of these things are serving to protect the child uh, who's using the quilt or who is wearing the garment the last thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about in relationship to these by Jabe or when um, these patchwork quilts is that uh, parents, adoptive parents in the United States who were in the midst of adopting a child from China in the late 1990s and early 2000s, they discovered this Chinese tradition of patchwork and they adapted it to uh, make a tradition of their own that they called 100 Good Wishes quilts. So parents uh, would collect fabrics from uh, family and friends uh, during their waiting period while they were waiting for their, their child, uh, their, the adoption to go through and they would make a quilt to welcome their child into their new family. So this became a, a much more recent tradition, a, a cross-cultural tradition here in the United States. Here is a young Chinese adoptee sitting on the quilt that her adoptive mother made for her. And they are beautiful and they uh, represent a really interesting mix of traditions uh, and different forms of material culture that are adapted to um, today's needs and desires and wishes. So I hope you enjoyed today's installment of Three Things About a World Quilt. I will see you next time.